We often take information for granted. In America, with a little research, one can find the exact piece of knowledge they're looking for. Yet in other parts of the world, that's not the case. The woman in today's story lived where every little piece of information was filtered. So how does one learn anything new, if that's the case? Well, let's find out. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. <laughs> yes, and that includes sound effects. I'm Timothy Gregory, bringing you the story of a woman who, growing up in a communist country, could be punished severely if she even whispered something she wasn't supposed to. But we'll learn about the life-changing news she heard that made her bravely shout it to the world on today's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. Also, you'll want to stick around because later we're going to give the rest of you an opportunity to enter yet another sweepstakes drawing for a prize. No, it's not a cash prize, but it is a prize, and I think it's a prize that you are really going to like if we draw your name. But first, let's get to it, folks. It's the story of Ada. Children, if you eat this egg, good things will happen to you. Peel it and eat, Ada. Yes, Grandma. One for you too, Diana. But don't tell anyone, not even your mom and dad. It's forbidden to celebrate Easter. If the wrong people learn that you've eaten red Easter eggs, your parents could go to prison. Save the shells and give them to me and I'll bury them so no one will find them. Big change is coming. So I hear, Ada. I know about the uprising. One of the students who protested was put in prison. But they finally let him out. He came to school and spoke to our military class. He's either very brave or very foolish. He's a friend of the teacher. Anyway, they lied to us. Who? The regime. He said they kill people in prison for no reason. None. Be very careful, Ada. They are still in power. Not for long. What they do is wrong. How could they lie to us? Because they are atheists. They don't believe in God, and so lying for them is okay if it serves their purpose. But God tells us lying is wrong. Who is God anyway? He rules everything. And you must not say anything bad against him. I know they say bad things about God in school, but when they do, just don't say anything. Nearly every language has a word for God, but that was not so at that time in Albania. The word God didn't even exist in the dictionary because the leaders wanted to stamp out all religion. They didn't succeed. This is the story of one woman's transformation during upheaval in her country. It's the true testimony of a woman we're calling Ada, right now on Unshackled. I was the first child born to my parents, but I was very small, two kilograms, and I experienced health issues as I grew up. My parents were very protective of me. They were specialists in the petrol industry of Albania, so our income and neighborhood were better than most. My parents worked different shifts so that one of them was always home with me. But my maternal grandmother often came and took me by bus to visit relatives. She always wore black because of the death of her brother. But yet her heart was merry, and she made people laugh. This is my granddaughter, and we're going to visit my sister in Berat. Hi, little girl. What's your name? Her name is Ada, and she goes to kindergarten. She knows very many poems, don't you, honey? She's not at all like other children. She's memorized many verses. <laughs> Ada, I think your grandmother loves you so much that she's exaggerating a bit. Do you really know many poems? I have a son your age and he knows very little. Tell me one of your poetries. Honey, recite the one your daddy taught you last week. 
My grandmother's pride and encouragement helped me blossom in school. My father also encouraged me by buying a new book every week. When I was five, my sister was born. I really loved her, and I was obedient to my parents. This helped in school, where my first grade teacher beat students who didn't learn well. I felt so bad for the children that she beat. I was ten when my second sister was born. Ada, you must help your mother more. I do, Grandma. She works a full-time job, so you must help even more at home now. I will. If you keep your dresses clean, that will be a big help to your mother. Be careful where you sit and be careful how you eat, okay? Yes. Your cousin Rosa was being greedy one day and tried to sneak some chocolates out of the house. But the chocolate smear on her dress gave her away. <laughs> See? It doesn't pay to be greedy. She made more work for her mother. Grandma, one of my friends has spots on her dress, and other girls make fun of her. That isn't right. That's what Mom said. My friend's parents don't make enough money, so she wears her older sister's clothes. Never judge your friends by what they wear. More important is the good inside the heart. I wrote a poem, Grandma, and one of my friends copied it and told the teacher she wrote it. <gasps> That is wrong. What did you do? Nothing. Someone told the teacher the truth, and the teacher punished her. You did the right thing, Ida. I learned so much from Grandma and my parents, but I didn't learn about God except for the secretive red eggs ritual. And by then, I was almost a teenager. No one trusted anyone. My father went to Belgium to get specialized in a petrol company. And when he returned, he didn't even tell mother what he did. At that time in Albania, none could work out of the country. My father was sent by the communist government to learn how to operate the new equipment of the company. He always pushed me to study hard, giving me more and more homework. Having a good education is important, Ada. So you must do your best. Laziness is a very bad habit. I'm not lazy, Daddy. I'm one of the best students in class. So you say? Why can't I go outside and play now? Kieta's outside. She's not studying. That's her responsibility, not yours. And don't compare yourself with others. Compare yourself with what's right, what's important. Yes, Father. I have to go now. So if you have any questions, leave it to the end, and I'll help you when I get back. If I finish before you get back? Can I go out and play? If you do your homework well, you can. But if I come back and see that you've not done it well, then you cannot go out tomorrow. Women in communist countries had to go into the military just like the men. So we had a military class in high school. Everyone had to learn how to use a Kalashnikov weapon. But I was afraid even to touch it. Fear had always ruled our lives, but especially in 1989, when communism was crumbling. I was 14. Did you see the protests yesterday? Yes, they're crazy. I'm afraid war will come and destroy us all. I think they're right. We have to fight for a better life. But the communist system is the best one of all. At least we have food. The rest of the world is starving. Mm, I don't believe that. What would you say? I'm watching TV. And the things happening in Romania are unbelievable. Be careful. I know of a man who went to prison for watching Italian TV. Poor man. Fifteen years they gave him. One of the students who joined the demonstrations was put in jail. He came back to our military class and told us the truth about communism. That the regime killed people in prison. That the West was not starving. And that we were not better off than the rest of the world. We were poor and repressed. What he said raised our hopes and our fears. Everything they taught us, just lies. How could they deceive us for so long? Because they control everything. Not anymore. The truth is coming out everywhere. Communism is false. Always they tell us we are the best. How can we ever trust them again? We can't. Trust only yourself. We have to fight for freedom. Do you think they kill people in prison? For just a word. The history teacher is such a witch. Forcing us to learn the party line, we know it's a lie. To her, it doesn't matter what we think or what is true. We must say what is written in the book. On TV, 
I see people pouring into West Germany where they have freedom. And someday we'll have freedom too. Freedom to speak. Freedom to think. Freedom to leave the country. Even freedom to learn about God. Atheism was taught in Albanian schools, so I never heard about God except from my grandmother. I wondered so much about him. And then one of my friends, who was studying in another city, returned with amazing stories. Ada, they're reopening a church there. The communists gave up the building. Shh, these walls have ears, right? The communists made the church into a place to train athletes. But no, it's becoming a church again. What's a church? A place to see and know about God. There is such a place? There used to be. I don't understand about God. Is he real? And if he is, why did he let him turn his churches into something else? I don't know, Ada. They say he created everything. He's even more powerful than the dictator. He can do what he wants with our life. How can that be true? I don't know. But when this church is open, we can go there and see. And I will let you know. By then, I was writing for radio and newspapers. This is what I wanted to do with my life. While I was home one night, I happened to see a television program in English. They were speaking about God. So I was curious and watched. I listened as a woman told how God heard her prayers and changed her life. Then the man turned to the camera and spoke right at me. God loves you, my friend. He promised thousands of years ago to save us from our sins, and he kept that promise. He sent his only son, Jesus, to die for our sins so we could go to heaven and be with him forever. God's holy word, the Bible, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever means you, my friend. God sent Jesus so that you could have a new life. Pray with us right now telling God that you repent of your sins against him and believe in Jesus as Lord, so you can begin this new life as a son or daughter of the sovereign God. Let us pray. I prayed with him because I wanted to know more about God. There were no churches in our city then. The next Sunday, the electricity was off so I couldn't see the program. But whenever I did, I kept learning more about God and the Bible and said the prayer each time at the end. Finally, I heard about one of the old churches having services, so I went on Sunday. I still didn't understand about God and kept asking for a Bible. One day, while visiting my aunt, a girl came and gave me a New Testament. I read four chapters each night. I could feel the change in me, but I didn't quite understand it all. I was in the university by then, and tried to pray on my own. I'm sorry, God. I don't know how to pray to you, but this is what I need. Please help me to have it. If this is for selfish reasons, it's okay if you don't give it to me. You know the future ahead of time, so I leave the situation in your hands. Amen. Folks, we'll get back to Ada's story in just a moment, but first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 73rd year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link 
If there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org. And then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, unshackled. We take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, let's get back to Ada's story. Getting that little red Bible was the happiest day of my life. It was my treasure. I tried to pray before very difficult exams, but I still didn't know how to pray. I asked many friends and cousins, but no one knew. Everyone thought I was acting strange. One day, the sister of my friend came in while I was praying. What are you doing, Ada? I'm trying to pray about tomorrow's exam, but I have to admit, I don't know how to pray very well. God must be so big. I'm embarrassed. I'll pray to God that you get a 10 on your exam. If you do, would you come to church with me tomorrow? I go to an old church near me. I'm fine. If you get a 10, will you come to the conference we have this week? Yes. Good. I'll pray. And if God wants you to come, you'll get a 10. I got a 10 on the exam and had to keep my promise and go to the conference with her. There, I saw people speaking about God like the man on the television, as if they knew him personally. It was so wonderful. God knows your every thought as well as your deeds. Yes, God knows you. But do you know God? You can know him by reading his word, the Holy Bible. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. King David wrote, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. So God's word will equip you to go through life knowing what to do in any situation. But above all, God's word will show you Jesus Christ, the Savior, he sent to pay for your sins and to take you to heaven. For the Bible tells us, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Jesus is the Word made flesh and walked with man. God knows you, and you can know God better by signing up for Bible school now. We'll give you the complete Word of God to study. I could hardly believe what I heard. They gave us forms to fill out if we wanted to go to Bible school, so I submitted the form. How glad I was to get a complete Bible, with the Old and New Testament. The world seemed to open up for me as I read so many new things about God. In September, I began five hours a day of Bible school, as well as university classes. So that was a difficult year for me. Are you reading that Bible again? Yes, Daddy. I have a test tomorrow on the prophet Daniel. You spend too much time on religion, Ada. Please don't distract me from my study time. But think of the other things you could be learning. Things that would help you in the world. God is more important in the world to me, Daddy. You're wasting your life on this. It's what I decided to do, and I'm doing it. In addition to my classes, I also worked at the public radio station in Tehran. I had two shows a week for teenagers, so I had to prepare many things, choosing the music and interviewing the musicians. At the end of the show, I had a game that listeners would call in and play. I loved my work, but didn't like my boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eda, you got through another week with your morality intact. <laughs> But it can last forever. Yes, it can. The Ice Princess. I'd like to break the ice. <laughs> <laughs> Let me alone, Mondi. Ah, uh, you're not different from all the other girls I've known. Yes, I am. You act as if you're on a pedestal. 
The untouchable one. If Saul, then God can keep me there. Uh, so you say. But one of these days, you will fall off this pedestal. And I want to be the one who catches you. Please, let me alone, Mondi. Why? You're missing everything. Ask the other girls. <laughs> I have decided to have only one man in my life, and that will be my husband. Oh, really? You may be waiting a long time. <laughs> Many times I thought about leaving my job and not going back. But I knew it was God's will for me to be there. A light in the darkness became very strong in what I believed. I also learned a lot about radio and how to serve the listeners. In 1996, I was in the sixth month of Bible school, in my third year of university, when Albania fell into civil war. Daddy, are you all right? I almost got killed again. I prayed that God would keep you safe. Some bystanders rescued me from the crowd. Don't go out. I have to. It's too dangerous. All the schools are closed. Everything is coming to a standstill, except the crowd. I've been listening to the radio, and the riots have spread across the country. We are safe under communism. Blame the so-called freedom we have now. It's greed, Daddy. Human nature. Blame the pyramid schemes. People trying to get rich quick. The government should have protected the people. Millions have lost their entire life savings. I have no faith in any government. Yes, I know. You have faith only in God. He's in control, Daddy. Then I wish he'd stop the anarchy outside. He has a purpose for everything he allows. Even this. For four months, chaos ruled Albania. The university and Bible school were closed. So I stayed in the house except for small cell groups that met in homes to worship God. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Amen. Amen. Especially during times like this. Do you think it will ever end? Yes. But I'm staying inside until it does. I've heard about women being kidnapped and sold into prostitution to some other country. Another good reason to stay inside. Maybe people will turn to God for help. Yes. yes. Hopefully. I'm using the time to read the Bible from the first verse to the last. And I'm learning so much. At least we can get together and pray. Let's pray for peace right now. Okay? Finally. The United Nations sent in troops to restore order in April 1997. The civil war had lasted four months. The university opened once again, and I returned to class and graduated. I produced several Christian programs for public radio, but my boss continued to pester me with his ungodly overtures. Why don't you quit, Ada? If he fires me, fine. That won't bother me. But I'm sure the Lord wants me to stay there for now. Have you told your father about that despicable man? No. That would make even more trouble. I've heard some people are planning to start a Christian radio station. Really? Yes. I'll ask around and see if I can find out who. Maybe you could help them. I'd love to work for Christian radio. Sure enough, in the new Albania, a Christian radio was launched. And I inquired, but they didn't need me. In time, however, they wanted my help. So I worked as a journalist at first. In three months, I was program director. The station was small, and so was the pay. But we were serving the Lord with our talents. And we honored and loved one another. Then, warfare in Kosovo drove thousands of refugees into our country. As a reporter, I interviewed them. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm with the radio station. May I speak with you? All is gone. Everything. They burned the village. <laughs> My whole village. My house is gone. All is lost. I'm so sorry. I'm so tired. They walk so far. My family. Where is my family? 
How can I find them again? There are people here who can help you find them. They tortured the men and then they killed them. I cannot bear to remember. God knows the sorrow you have endured. How can God let such terrible things happen? How they destroy our country? I know. They do not know God. They molest our young girls. And now we have to take care of the babies born to them. Nobody wants those babies. Jesus wants them. He loves every baby that is born. <laughs> My people, we have no home. Everything is gone. The Lord still cares for you. No one can take away the love of Jesus Christ. Will you let me pray with you? Yes. Pray. Dear Heavenly Father, comfort the hearts of these people who are so afraid and so hurt. Lord, they've seen and been through terrible things. Father, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. You have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Help them, Lord. Please help them find your eternal peace so they can follow you. Finally, NATO entered Kosovo and secured the area so people could return. I went there with several friends to pray and fast for the healing of the nation. It was there that God put on my heart to begin a Christian radio station. I was afraid. In confirmation, while sharing my passion to reach the world for Christ using radio, someone asked, why don't you open your own station? What did you tell them? That it's very expensive, and I'm just a little Albanian girl. But nothing is impossible with God. That's what she said. It was like confirmation. And now you say the station where you work is closing? For personal reasons, the owner said. Are you sure you can do this, Eda? I've been praying about that for the past year. I told the Lord he would have to show me everything to do. I'm glad to see you so dedicated to following Christ. But this is a big step. You'll be up against men of great power and dirty money. This is God's will. And life is too short not to do his will. After a year of faithful prayer with my friends in the church, I took over the Christian station. It's a big challenge for a woman in Albania, but God has opened one door after another, showing me the way. Ours is the biggest Christian station in Albania and the third largest radio station. What a joy and privilege to see lives turned around to God's kingdom. If you are at a point in your walk with the Lord where you don't feel his presence, trust him anyway. Trust his word, because he is faithful and true. Is he speaking to your heart right now, listening friend? Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Jesus came to give you life, and life more abundantly. God is ready to hear your prayer and adopt you into his family. The first step always begins with asking God to forgive your sins and believing that Jesus took the punishment you deserved when he died on the cross. The next step is to find a Bible-believing church where you can be discipled and explore how God has uniquely designed you to love others into a deeper relationship with him. If you need help in making this crucial decision, we encourage you to call 1-888-NEED-HIM or you can get in touch with us here at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Now, we love hearing from our listeners here on the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, so send us your questions and we'll answer them here. It can be something you're curious about or just something you want to share with us. All you have to do is write us at podcast at unshackled.org or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We'd love to hear from you. Now, before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. We'd also love for you to review or rate our podcast and 
Don't forget to check out our other podcasts on this same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled in Person. We appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. All right, the new prize for this sweepstakes contest is yet another beautiful wooden scripture plaque. The verse on this one is 2 Chronicles 16.9. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. This plaque is gorgeous. It's contrasting chestnut brown outer ring and the light brown inner ring of the bark truly shows the diversity of God's creation. If you'd like a peek at this scripture plaque, you're welcome to visit our podcast website, unshackledpodcast.org, and stop by the audio drama page for a picture. The deadline to enter is September 2nd. And next time... This is a beautiful car. It's okay. One of these days I'll have one I like better. Richard Haddad had everything going for him. There was Dick. Tall, dark, handsome, and rich. Until a dizzy spell at work changed the course of his future. What? What's the matter, Dick? I don't know. I've never felt like this before. It feels like my head's filling up with air. I can hardly walk. With his health on the decline and doctors unable to make a diagnosis, Richard turned to alcohol to console him. You are a mass of fears. Alcohol doesn't help. That alone can rob a man of all the courage he has. It piles fear on fear. Well, <laughs> what can I do? Would it all turn around? I've heard that Jesus Christ can give new life. This one is over for me. Don't miss the classic true story of Richard Haddad, coming soon on Unshackled. Heard in the true story of a woman we've called Ada were Angela Morris, Marcy Mencotti, Jim McCants, Allison Voller, Brian Plaharchik, and Brad Armacost. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Holly Krajewski. Recording and audio engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, Kenitha Gabler. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ. <laughs>